second games ever, and they've been around a long time. So it's understandable that the – but I always did think that it was funny that to the owners – and this is why it's such a cash grab – because to the owners, the solution to a bad team is a new stadium. Yeah. Not buying yourself a bunch of killer players. No, it's like when you paint a house that's haunted. Hopefully right. The, the ghost leaves. Is that true? If you paint a house that's haunted? Mm-hmm. Whew. I've never heard that. Now, again, I don't believe in ghosts. But I'm I'm curious what the what the thought process Those is. Those are allergic to paint. Is yes. that what it is? The fumes? Do the fumes knock them out, the or lights. do you disorient them to the where they show up and they go? I, I don't live here. My I house, live in a is, greenhouse. house is green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Did you ever see that documentary about when they tried to move uh, the the baseball team out of Cleveland? No, I didn't. didn't. What is that called? The only thing that they had left to do was win the whole damn thing. I, and the I whole did city not. Rallied around the team and they won the World Series. What is that called? Major League. I've never seen that movie. Are you serious? Yeah. You're not just going along with my bet. You've literally never seen Major League. Mm-mm. No. Well, that's why you didn't think the joke was funny. Bill, you've seen that movie many times. Did you think the joke was funny? I thought it was very, very um, sad. Very sad. Very sad. It was, it, very, it was sad. It was a very sad. Joke. It was articulated. It happened. It happened. <laughs> and okay. So the Indians in Major League, the Indians win the World Series. Yes. Is that the denouement of that movie? Yeah, You're like, yeah, hey. I mean, I, you know, I kind of know the beats of it, but. Yeah, that would, the, Charlie Sheen's in it. Yeah, and, yeah, the mean lady buys a team and wants to sell it because attendance. The mean low. lady. What's her name? Yeah, she's like a hot mean lady. She's okay. Rich. Yeah, she's the owner of the team. She was, I don't remember the name of her. I don't remember her name either. Is it Waylon Flowers and Madam? Maybe. Speaking of baseball, Trevor Bauer is in hot water again. Uh, Another woman has come forward and said that he was doing all kinds of nasty things to her. She's the fourth person to say he's got some real problems in the boudoir. And, of course, he's saying that it's all made up. And if anybody says differently, he'll choke them out. He was cut from the Dodgers. He's playing for a Japanese team right now. I thought he was playing in Korea, but no. Okay. Somewhere in Asia, right? Yeah. He's not playing over here. Nope. Um, he was accused by that woman in Arizona who said that he knocked her up. Um, and then um, another woman came forward and said that uh, he did some stuff to her, too. So, I don't know. But uh, the fourth, uh, fourth woman to accuse him of uh, sexual assault. He, of course, says it's consensual, and there were a lot of text messages first time around that seemed to corroborate his version of the story. But you never know. The only people who know are Trevor Bauer, Gesundheit, and these four women. Gesundheit. Goodness, thank you. Stories about sexual assault are like pollen to Mary. I'm allergic to yeah. s- beating women. I understand. It's an awful, awful thing. Mm-hmm. But he's not out of the woods yet. Not out of the woods yet. Alan, did you see what's happening at Taylor Swift bathrooms at her shows? Okay, so uh, Friday on this show, I've got Taylor Swift tickets that I'm giving away. One pair. We're going to do it here at the window, and I've told you, as it's Father's Day weekend, this is an opportunity for you dads to either win them for your daughter, wife, whatever, whatever permutation of that you want to do, or take them and sell them on the secondary market. That's not my judgment to make. All you'll have to do is come in your best Taylor Swift getup to my studio window, prepare to perform. My seven-year-old will be here to judge, and one person will get tickets for the Taylor Swift show in Pittsburgh on Saturday night. What's happening, according to this person sent me this story, what's happening at the Taylor Swift shows is it is so female-heavy in attendance that they've had to repurpose, like, Everybody's using all the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. There's no big long line for the guys. So guys who are at Taylor Swift shows, and I'm talking to whatever you, whichever one of you dads wins on Friday, you get to sail right past because you're just trying to cop a urinal. And there's a big, long, angry line of women waiting to use the loo. Angry because they're missing the show. You who you could make a case probably care less about it than your female company. You walk in, 
have a WAS, walk right back out. So that's what I don't know if they're doing that at every venue. That's what they did at Soldier Field. Uh, that's what they have been doing at a lot of these venues. Is uh, or just repurposing the men's rooms to accommodate all of the women. So something to look forward to. If you're the dad who wins here on Friday. And if you want to join us for it, if you want to be one of the people to compete, to come to the window, uh, you can always uh, shoot me an email. And I'll tell you whatever you need to know. I had to tell my dad that I was a vegan. I'm a new vegan. So this past Thanksgiving, I had to tell him what that meant. I wasn't eating turkey. He goes, Peter, why aren't you eating turkey? I go, well, I'm a vegan. He goes, vegan? I'm like, vegan? Vegan? <laughs> Just repeat the noise I'm making to you. Vegan? I'm like, yeah, I'm a vegan. I'm from the Star Vega. <laughs> but I told him, this is a complete quote from me and my dad. I go, Dad, it just means I don't eat animal products. Without missing a beat, this is exactly what he said. He goes, so what do you eat all day? Friggin' yogurt? <laughs> no idea. Couldn't think of one. Couldn't think of one. Like, what do you eat all day? Beef cheek sandwiches? Happy. <laughs> No idea where his food comes from. There's Pete Holmes coming out to his dad as an alien. Am I hearing that correctly, Pete? You had to come out to your father as an extraterrestrial? You know, that bums me out because I don't know where you got that clip from, but what, I added a line. You know how it is in show business. These things are works in progress. And my favorite line from that joke is I go, just repeat the sound I'm making, and I didn't do it at the show, but then I go, a chasm could do it. That's my favorite part of it. And it yeah. wasn't, it actually bums me out when I watch old clips of myself and I'm like, oh, that, that was a joke. It's a work in progress. And that's, you know, jokes are never finished. They're abandoned. Well, They're here we are. I've, I've already gotten us off on the wrong foot. I never want to bum you know. out. Oh, no, you didn't bum me out. I, I, I got me off on the right foot because I enjoy my own jokes. So I liked it. But part of me, for you and for everybody, I wanted to be like, it was the best line. It was missing. <laughs> the best line was missing. Right. Understood. Uh, yes. How are you? And I'm an, I, I'm good. I'm also newly not vegan, which is hard uh, hard to talk about. I, I started eating uh, living things again, just killing things. So explain so that to me because I'm always fascinated. I, I really am less fascinated by people who go who become vegan because I fully understand that. I'm still yeah. – I, I don't eat a lot of meat, but I do like meat. I can't see ever giving it up. But – it's the people yeah. who return to being carnivores in whatever capacity. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. really fascinating to me. Ex-vegan. Well, I saw Rick Rubin, you know, Rick Rubin, the music producer. Yeah. He was talking about it. And he said something that, uh, first of all, I mean, you're right. The thing that's annoying, my friend Kumail said this, what's annoying about vegans is they're right. Everybody loves animals. You know what I mean? Like, it just makes sense to be like, to so stop murdering them. Like, <laughs> right. okay. Right. I will, I will say... Having gone back to eating uh, chicken mostly and some fish, I the best part of it, obviously I do feel better. It, it seems to be working with my body. But my favorite thing about it, maybe you'll laugh, is that I judge people less. You know, because when you're a vegan, one of the things that's actually heavy about it, and I'm not even joking, is you go around kind of feeling better than people. And that's a burden on you. It's right. just a crappy way to feel. I'm not even joking right now. Like you just go like, ah, I'm, I'm watching you eat like a hot dog. And I, I kind of can't help but think you're a jerk. And that's, it takes a toll on you. That's, that's been the best part to just kind of go and like, look, I get it. It's not great. It's not, not great. It's just sort of what's happening. But I like that I, that I'm judging less. It, it makes me a little bit. Uh, more compassionate. It's also very interesting to me what lengths people will go to to round out the corners. That's where pescatarians came from, right? They didn't yeah. want to go oh, all yeah. the way, but they're like, well, I'm not, I don't yeah. eat meat, but I'll eat a fish. You know, they, yeah. people don't want to go all the yeah. way. So coming back from it was more for you, it was more of a um, um, undoing the mental burden on yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I started with fish. That's where I started slipping back. And then I had to call BS on myself. Whereas, like, they're just swimming chickens. You know what I mean? They're water chickens. And, <laughs> yeah. But we don't, we don't care about fish. Like, let's just get honest. We don't care about fish as much as we care about land animals. And it's because we're a land animal. 
You know what I mean? Like my dog looks like a cow, but what is a fish? It just looks like a swimming eyelid. So here's, here's how I know I don't care about fish as, as much as I care about land animals, is if I'm watching, especially if I'm stoned or something and I'm watching the Nature Channel and lions or something are gonna kill a gazelle. I, I hate it, I don't wanna see it. I'm not one of those people, I'll skip ahead. I don't wanna see that, I don't wanna see the spider stuff. I just wanna see you know polar bears protecting their young, so good stuff. So if a lion is gonna kill a gazelle, a gazelle is too much like me, you know, four limbs, two eyes, head on a swivel. It just looks like me in a costume. So I, I, I relate to it more, but a fish, you know, he's got no arms, he's got no legs, he's just down there. I, I look at him, I look down on fish. I, I'm like, we evolved. <laughs> we, we, we used to be in there. Right. And we, and we saw the way the wind was blowing and we grew some legs and we got out of there. You stay in the, you stay in the lake, you get what's coming to you, you dumb fish. So that's where it started. And now I'm just like, ah, I don't know. I can't call it. I can't call it. Conversely, you know, the gazelle thing, I, I, I understand where you're coming from there. Conversely, if you're watching a nature special with a grizzly at the bank of a river and it's just pulling salmon out of yeah. the water. Your reaction okay. is not, oh, those poor fish. It's look at that majestic land animal yes. feeding himself. Yes, you don't care at all. You're just like, that is a great bear. That bear is a lucky bear. Yeah, you made my point better than I did. That's exactly my point. But you know, I get on all fours. You know, I look, I look like a gazelle, but there's no way I can really look like a fish, not without a a hefty bag and gluing on some scales, I suppose. <laughs> we would be equally as unlucky on the Serengeti if we were running around in that costume. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 don't, I, don't have, I don't have it figured out. People that come on my podcast, especially when I was a vegan, uh, would make the counter argument. And some of the more interesting ones that I would hear, one, everything's alive. Meaning, even if you, if you opt out of eating animals, which I think is, is, is noble, I think that's, that's a good thing to do, but you're still not off the hook. We just don't care about the plight of a tomato. We don't care about the plight of, of vegetables, even though everybody knows this. This, this came out in like the 70s. There's data that shows that plants have like survival instincts. Look at any plant that's bending towards the light, you know, when they're in your yard and they like slowly move over towards the light. Similarly, you take out a knife in front of a tomato, they, they, I don't know how they measure this, you'd have to ask the people that did the study, but like it has a fear response. These things want to live, they want to propagate, they want to reproduce, they want to protect their young trees in the forest. Have you heard about this? There's like the mother tree, it's the yeah. tree that started the forest. And if you cut it down, the trees that surround the mother tree will keep the stump of the mother tree <laughs> alive right. for decades as a way of mourning. So what I'm saying is, look, be compassionate, be beautiful, don't do harm in all the ways that you can. But like, we're all sort of in this together. We're in this strange, dualistic, black, white, alive, dead, in, out, up, down system. And there's really no way out of it. There's just varying degrees. So if you're gonna eat almonds, right? And I eat almonds. Almonds, when they harvest almonds, machines harvest almonds, it's sucking up rodents. It's killing rodents. It's killing those. But it's also killing the almonds. It's also killing the bugs. <laughs> it's also killing a habitat. Not only that, Ooh, but, it's a, but not only that, it takes an inordinate amount of water to grow yes, almonds. Yes. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. I think there's a higher perspective, and it's not pretty and it'll never be popular, but you have to come to terms with the fact that we're living in a reality that isn't harmless, that isn't um, you know, it's not an Apple store. It's not a perfect flushing toilet at the airport. It's messy. It's strange. We're all doing the best we can. So like anything you can do to just be compassionate to whatever people are eating, especially what they're eating, because what you're eating is tied to your parents. It's tied to your childhood. It's tied to love and safety. And it, I'll say I was a vegan for nine years. It was exhausting to kind of go around and be like, you know how they get eggs, right? And like, yeah, you know, right, it, it yeah. Was, was, like you're constantly, every time you're hanging out with friends, it's like you're perpetually giving a TED talk. And buddy, here's, somebody had a joke about that. They were like, the reason why vegans are pissed off is because it's a choice you have to make three times a day. People are eating three, usually more, yeah. five times a day. So five times a day, you're faced with it. And five times a day, you're at a meal where people are like, why are you eating you know, <laughs> why are you eating plain bread or whatever? <laughs> and it's just sort of like, 
it's exhausting. And I'm not saying I'm right. If any vegans are listening, like, really, I, I salute you. I'm, I'm just reporting that since I've, and you mentioned you have a, a daughter. I, I have a four and a half year old. Something about having a kid and sort of watching her, you know, she was drinking formula and I'm like, well, this is milk and I'm giving my daughter milk and now, now I'm going easier. Then they don't eat, finish their pizza. Now I'm eating her pizza. You know, it started doing something that was actually kind of beautiful, which was I started taking myself less seriously in every way imaginable. Yeah. And she did, enabled did you. Have you. That experience? <laughs> yeah, she she just made me. Yeah, she enabled. I'm blaming her. It's your fault, Leila. Daddy was a beautiful saint, and now, but you know, like when you have a kid, everything shifts. And one of the things that shifted for me, or I guess I should say, I realized I had all this energy to attack issues and and consider things that now that I sleep so much less and I'm constantly pushing her on a swing or picking her up and taking her ballet. Like now I'm just sort of like, yeah, give me, give me the freaking chicken. I'll eat the chicken. You know what I mean? Yeah. Your, your, I, your priorities are laser focused. Whereas before they were kind of varied and, and uh, diverse, you know, that's right. That's yeah. right. And there's nothing better for a comedian, you know, and you guys are in show business too. It's like, it's so beautiful when our job is to deliver ourselves and to present our personalities having a daughter is the healthy, it's not why I did it. I did it. It was an expression of love, obviously, but I've noticed that it's like, it's so balancing. Um, I, I can't say every comedian should do it, but for me, it's brought me back to reality and made me just so much more connected to life. Can Comedians you name, pirates, you know, can you name specifically the comedians that shouldn't do it? <laughs> they yeah, shouldn't have sure. kids. I mean, it's 90% of us, that's for sure. I mean, we are, we're a weird, weird species. I, I, I started to make it the comparison I always make is pirates. We, we sail around, we go from port to port, and we're not, you know, we're not ravaging the land, but we travel around, we live this alternative lifestyle. We're up while other people are sleeping. We, we sleep while other people are working. We're a bizarre group. And I, I'm one of those people, you know, I'm doing these shows uh, at uh, Hilarities in Cleveland, and I'll be performing on Father's Day. Right there. That's weird, right? Shouldn't yep. I be? Yep. Shouldn't I be at home? Yeah. No OJ in bed? <laughs> Daddy's got to no. work. And you know what? But the beautiful thing is, you know, it's not the king of queens over here. My wife isn't going like, oh, brother. Right. She knows. She knows I'm, I'm uh, an alien in certain ways, and, and we found this beautiful balance. And my friends that are like, aren't you bummed that you have to work on, on uh, Father's Day? And I'm like, no, that's a beautiful Father's Day for me. I mean, I, I regret that I won't be able to see Leela on that day, but she doesn't know. Right. She doesn't, she doesn't, need, she doesn't even know it's Sunday. <laughs> So drop the story. Be happy that you have to work for sixty minutes a day. Like, what do I have to complain about? It's I not like it's not like out. she's. It, but when you're a dad, you you close your eyes and you envision her standing there with a handmade card drenched in tears because she has to wait to yeah. give it to you. And that's not really what's going on. That's not what's going on at all. My my daughter, it's so cute. She already goes like, I go like, I'm going away this weekend, and she goes, You're gonna go make people laugh. And I'm like, Yep. That's what I do. Fingers crossed. Then, if it all goes well, that's what's going to happen. That's the idea. Baby, it's been over 20 years. That That's done. Either <laughs> yeah. if they're terrible and they don't laugh, that's on them. Yeah, that <laughs> ship has sailed. So that's, are you, uh, Pete, Honestly, Holmes, that's, that's on them. Pete Holmes is at Hilarities. <laughs> uh, those two shows are Saturday and Sunday. Two shows Saturday, two shows Sunday. Are you running a new hour? Are you filming all this or what's happening? Yeah, I am running a new hour. I'm really happy with it. It actually works out for Father's Day because there is a lot of stuff about being a dad, uh, having a baby in the lockdown. Uh, she's four and a half now, so it kind of spans. Yeah. The lockdown started, I was in Cleveland when, uh, remember, Trump gave the speech that was like, okay, it looks like this is serious and we all have to go home. I was in Cleveland the night before my shows when that happened, and I ended up flying home obviously because state do you remember that like state by state yes i vaguely they were they started canceling basketball games and then it was yeah i I vaguely remember you being right in the area pete i walked past their shirts that you have at hilarities a billion times oh yeah because they're just in the hallway there they're like waiting for you yeah and so it's gonna be such a triumphant weekend 
to finally uh, have you like it, it's kind of the signal of the end of the pandemic is the guy that was supposed to be there yeah, is yeah. finally back coming and, back to perform. Yeah. It is. It was. It, it was that for me. Cleveland was the beginning of the pandemic, and I remember walking around uh, downtown Cleveland. Obviously, everybody like didn't know what to do and just went inside. So I walked around. You know, like the beginning of Vanilla Sky, or like <laughs> the movie. yeah. Every everybody was just gone, and I was like, "What is this?" And it was so weird to bookmark Cleveland as the beginning of that experience. But there is something really beautiful and full circle about coming back and reclaiming it. And honestly, and isn't this just how life works? That hour that I was going to do in Cleveland all those years ago is now you know ten times better. But I was I was ready to film it. So it got disrupted, but then all the shows that I did in the two years since then have made it my favorite hour that I've ever done. So I'm like, oh, you know, there's a silver lining there for me. Well, listen, um, I always like catching up with you. You're still my favorite Batman. Oh, and uh, <laughs> and um, my daughter likes those too. <laughs> yeah, uh, Pete Holmes is back in Cleveland, signaling that our national pandemic nightmare is finally over. Uh, the Where We That's Were right. tour, or Where Were We tour, rather. Uh, Pete Holmes is going to do two shows on Saturday and Sunday, right around the corner here uh, at Hilarities. You go to Pickwick and Frolic dot com for the details. Uh, the podcast is You Made It Weird, and um, best of luck out there, pal. Good luck with. Uh, uh, the family, you. and uh, welcome back to Cleveland this weekend, and we'll catch up with you down the road. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for having me on and getting the word out. And and if it's easier, there's a link at PeteHolmes.com. PeteHolmes.com. There you go. Thanks, pal. I don't pal. even know what Pickwick is. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, thank you. All right, there's Pete Holmes. i got to take a break here. If you want to send a text, 35. 35-